Hey, what's up turtles? Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. Today's video is gonna be on the jacket I'm wearing, which is the Woolrich Modern Hunt Coat. It's a wool jacket, blend, about 85% wool, and it's retailing for $250, and I'm not even certain if this is being produced anymore. But with that being said, the reason why I wanted to do this video is just as much as it's the Woolrich Hunt Coat is about the features of why I chose to purchase this jacket. So like I said, 85% wool, it's a heavy jacket. Almost weighs, it does weigh over four pounds, so it's very heavy. But with all that being said, let's get into some of the features and the reasons why I really, really like this jacket. Okay, so on the outside of this jacket, there are six external pockets. Starting up here, the chest pockets. Nice big heavy flap, snap closure, which for longevity's sake, I would like to see buttons, but definitely not a deal breaker because I really don't use them. The flap's heavy enough. And cotton up top here on the flap, inside the pocket is nylon lined, which is the same lining that's in the sleeves of the jacket. So you have two of those on each side, really nice. I really like a lot of pockets on the outside. The best and second pair of pockets I'm gonna talk about right now is, are these hand warmer pockets right here that my hand's sitting in. This is definitely one of the features that I love about this jacket is having these pockets up here. You can see the way my arm's sort of resting. It's a very comfortable position to put your hands up here as opposed to moving down here to these lower pockets. And this sort of has a configuration of, you know, the M65 field jacket to a degree. And, you know, that style of jacket that you see on those field jackets. And again, really big pockets down here, big heavy flaps snaps not buttons on this which is again okay but this is lined with the same cotton twill that this pocket is used and the interior of the jacket so very nice to have six external pockets on the front of the jacket another one of the features that i love about this jacket is this high collar now sit it down you can see what it looks like sitting down lays really nice I have this buttoned up pretty high at the top button actually, so it's covering you know, my neck pretty well, stopping that draft from coming down. But here's the collar sitting low. And I love this oversized collar because it's stiff, meaning when I put it up the whole way, it stays up. It doesn't flop down, it stays up. And this is you know, sort of the highest, I guess, setting you can say for this collar. And I'll use variability within this. If I don't want it this high, I can just basically roll down a top inch up the whole way, roll down the top inch, opens it up a little bit in the front, and I feel a little bit less restricted right here, but I still keep my neck nice and covered from the wind, from falling snow, anything like that. So this collar is awesome. I've looked for jackets with hoods, wool jackets with hoods, and there are some out there, but this collar to me is more versatile because I get to wear this brimmed hat that I wear all the time I can put this up, cover my neck, and I don't lose any peripheral that I'd lose if I put a hood up. So this high collar, awesome, awesome. I love this collar on the jacket. I wanna talk about the cuffs now on the jacket at the end of the sleeves. Before I talk about that, actually, there's this little flap right here with two, I guess, loop fields that you can tighten this up if you need to. I never found it to be an issue. Really, I could do without these. They're there, no problem. What we really want to talk about are these sort of wrist, even extensions coming off the main jacket body. And they're sewn in a couple inches down. Sewn a couple inches down, my fingers are going up the sleeve and they're sewn in right here. They're nice that they come over my hand when I'm not wearing a glove. It'll stop a breeze from going up my sleeve. But these are pretty tight. They're pretty tight and they're not so bad right now because I basically took two plastic cups, shoved them up inside here took them out, repeated that process to slowly try to stretch this out a little bit more to give a little bit looser feel on and around my hand and my wrist. I thought about just cutting these out completely, but that would be a permanent mod that I couldn't really put them back. So I tried to stretch them. They, it worked and feels a lot more comfortable having uh, since I have uh, stretched them. And it's definitely just a little bit of a quirk with this jacket is how tight this, these were. And I know other people have expressed the same thing to have this jacket, that these are a little tight and sort of uncomfortable. So I stretched them out. The closure system on the jacket is buttons, which I really, really like and prefer 
because it gives sort of an old time feel. In addition to that, it's super, super practical. Meaning if a button breaks, I can just replace it. I can sew on another button. There's no zipper track to fail in five years, 10 years, and then basically rendering the jacket it's sort of useless. With these buttons, you know, as long as I use this jacket 30, 40 years from now, or I pass it on to someone, these buttons will still be more than functional. The holes coming through this side of the jacket, you know, there's sort of a button flap. You can see that. Protect the buttons, give a nice little seal, if you will. And I just, like I said, I really like buttons because the longevity of the system will basically last as long as this jacket is kept, you know, and uh, taken care of. So buttons running the whole up and down front closure of the jacket. And as I alluded to earlier a few times, this jacket's lined in the sleeves and the main body of the jacket. And that does a few things. This is 100% cotton twill. I believe it's 11 ounce. But having this lining does a few things. If the wool itself isn't tight or really tight weave itself, this lining will help increase wind resistance. And this jacket does a great job at that. I've had some pretty very cold and windy conditions where I didn't feel the wind at all. And I attribute that to the lining. But in addition to the lining, I have two internal pockets. There's a slip pocket right here, a smaller slip pocket with my hands in, and then what Warch calls a media pocket, which just is a zippered pocket right here, which is really nice to have a few internal pockets in the jacket. I want to take it off and show you the lining in the sleeve. Hand out first. Here's the jacket inside out, and here's the sleeve, this lining. And the lining does a few things. I mentioned about the wind resistance offering that, but also the fact that I'm wearing a 100% wool sweater today. And if this jacket wasn't lined, I'd have a lot of friction on wool on wool, basically. And the lining basically just allows this wool layer or any other sort of textured layer that you're gonna be wearing, it just allows it, excuse me, <laughs> oh wow. It allows me to move freely and not sort of have restricted range of movement through friction. So it's again a really nice thing I like about this jacket and something to consider if you're thinking about getting a wool, wool jacket. All right, I have the jacket back on, buttoned up, get my collar up, it's cold. It's probably mid twenties, maybe a little colder in Fahrenheit out here. Well, my closing thoughts about this jacket. First of all, I wanna start with when and why I wear a heavy wool jacket like this as opposed to synthetics. First is, if I'm gonna be close to a fire, I want something basically made out of wool because I don't wanna worry about burning a hole straight through an expensive synthetic layer. And this is expensive, yes, but if an ember hits this, and granted, if I catch it, I can still brush it off, it's not gonna instantly burn a hole through the fabric. I really don't like having my synthetics on when I'm around a fire. It happens, it happens, but I like wool for that reason. There's really no comparison between the weight to warmth ratio, synthetic or down versus wool. Wool is very heavy and it's warm, has a lot of insulated properties even when wet, but it's very, very heavy compared to synthetics. Another reason why I like this jacket is check it out. Check out that color. It's a Pennsylvania tuxedo. You know, well, we're from PA. We're from PA. You know, this is my Saturday night best. Wear this to the symphony. But all honesty, I really like this classic red color and also it offers some contrast depending the time of year if I'm in the forest and there's hunters as opposed to wearing my normal earth tone colors blend in. This red definitely gives me contrast and I stand out. So just a safety thing. In addition to that, it's warm, it's heavy. And I'm gonna wear this jacket and other wool jackets when I'm being more methodical through the forest. I'm not just hiking. I'm not, my plan isn't just to go out and, and walk five miles. It's more when I'm being, you know, sort of thoughtful. It's more of just a headspace in my part of what I wanna do out in the forest for the day. So I'll wear something heavy if I'm just slowly going through the forest, looking around, looking down, looking up, and I'm not so worried about covering ground. Because if I was hiking in this jacket, literally just hiking, covering ground on a trail, I would warm up so fast and need to take this off pretty, pretty soon. And that's pretty much all I have to say about this jacket. If you have any questions about this or I guess uh, just anything in general for me, leave a comment, let me know. Hope you enjoyed the video. Get a lot of questions about this jacket, so I wanted to do a video on it and, uh, and share, share why I like it and how I've been using it. 
This is Crick, signing out with Black Outdoors. Later, turtles.